So you're one of the lucky who got their hands on a pretty sold out Chromecast. Hell, you might be watching this video on your television right now. So what do you say we try to get a little bit more out of it? Hey, it's Josh Regard from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And these are some tips and tricks for the Chromecast. But before I get into the tips and tricks, I want to answer a couple questions that came up in the review. Basically, the Chromecast does not stream content straight from your phone or tablet. So if you have some local content on your tablet or on your phone, it's not going to be able to be casted over to your television. The way it works, actually, is that when you hit that cast button on YouTube or Netflix or Play Music, it relays the information to the Chromecast so it can find the content from the source itself. By using some HTML5 magic, the Chromecast connects to the actual service, finds your video or music, and then plays it. After you install the Chromecast app and then update all of your media apps, this is all available. If you do really want to stream content from a local source, that is somewhat possible using a laptop or computer. Like I said in the review, you are able to use the Chromecast to broadcast a tab from a Chrome browser. Now what's really awesome is that tabs in Chrome browsers can actually display a ton of stuff. Websites, flash content, and pictures. But let's say you have some local videos you want to watch. If your Chrome browser has the appropriate plugin to view the content, then that tab will play it. And then you can just send that tab to the Chromecast. Just browse your computer hard drive from within Chrome to your video and it will display through the browser tab. Then hit Chromecast. It's pretty awesome, right? This allows for the Chromecast to bridge the gap between your computer and your television. Think outside the box and you'll realize the possibilities. I even have a Plex media server that my friend set up and all the content from there streams to my computer, which then streams to my living room TV. At least for me, this is definitely the easiest way I've ever gotten internet and local content to my television. But it doesn't have to stop there. Hidden away in a small arrow on the side of the Chromecast extension is an option to cast not only a tab, but the entire computer screen. Now this is a very beta feature, and while it is nice to have for perhaps quick presentations or picture viewing, it may not be a particularly smooth stream. But I'm sure that this feature will be continuously enhanced and just get better and better. Now you may notice the first time you try this Chrome browser streaming that it isn't completely smooth. Well, there are ways of optimizing it. Since your computer is basically, in this case, transcoding on the fly, it also has to stream the end product to your Chromecast. This is when a very fast internet connection is important and recommended. In the browser extension, hit the options button and you'll see the main way of helping this. The transcoded footage can be set to a high bitrate 720p, regular 720p, which is the default setting, or a much easier 480p. Now for my decent internet connection, 480p works beautifully. Sure, it isn't high definition, but it's better than choppy video. So those are just some ways of getting more out of your Chromecast, especially if you're using a computer. But let's get back to the hardware itself. If you happen to have a TV that has HDMI version 1.4, then you may not need the USB charging cord or the wall plug because the TV may be able to route power to the Chromecast itself. Unfortunately, I don't have any TVs that are able to demonstrate this. But on the other hand, you might want to keep it plugged into the wall because there's an extra feature in the Chromecast that might work for those of you who happen to have these TVs with these particular versions of HDMI. See, if you start a cast from your phone or tablet or from your computer and your TV is off, it can send the information to the Chromecast and recognize that the TV is off and then turn it on and switch to the proper source. Unfortunately, again, I don't have any TVs that can demonstrate this. And finally, this tip is for anybody who ran into the same problem that I had in the review. Like I said before, my DLP TV does include an HDMI input, but it is rather old and the 5.1 system that came with it requires audio to come straight from the source. If you haven't noticed, the Chromecast has only the HDMI output. Some people commented that I could get an AV receiver, but those things can cost over $200. Since I only needed a way to split the Chromecast signal, I decided to find something for that specific purpose. I did, and it is this box that actively splits the video and audio signal into HDMI and SPDIF. Perfect for my setup. Now I can go from this... ...to this.
Like I said before though, this adds more total cost to your Chromecast experience, so be aware of your setup at home before you pull the trigger. But to me, this was worth having my big screen available for all my viewing pleasure. And so, there you have it. Just a few tips and tricks for you to get even more out of your Chromecast. I think the best feature is still the Chrome browser tab broadcasting because you could do so much in a Chrome browser and then all of a sudden it's available on your TV. I'm sure though that a lot of these vendors and companies are soon going to be made available for the Chromecast like HBO Go, Revision 3, Songify. We already have reports of them testing to become available on the Chromecast. So it's only going to be a matter of time before a service that you want to have on there is probably going to make it on there. And that's what's great about the Chromecast. It has a very open architecture so that when the SDK is released, a lot of people are probably going to jump right on it. So broadcasting a Chrome tab from your computer will likely be just the workaround you have for now. And pretty soon, a whole lot of possibilities are going to open up. As always, for the best coverage, make sure you stay tuned to Android Authority's channel. Drop us a like down below, don't forget to subscribe. And once you're done with all of that, head on over to androidauthority.com. We're your source for all things Android.